Hello and welcome to another edition of First Baptist Church of Elizabethtown, Kentucky International Standard Sunday School Lesson. We're so happy that you joined us today. And before we get started, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for being with us today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we just just depend upon him, O oh God, just to guide and direct our path this day. Let it be all of you and none of us. Let your Holy Spirit have his own way in our midst, O oh God. Let our hearts comprehend your truth, O oh God. Let every listening ear hear your word and take it to heart and live thereby. If there be anyone who does not know Jesus Christ as our Savior, pierce their heart by your Spirit to receive him this day. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you're my strength and my Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right, if you're watching us on Facebook, please like and share. And if you're on YouTube or Instagram, subscribe and uh, so that you'll be notified when a Sunday School lesson pops up on your page, okay? All right, today's overall lesson is reckoned as righteous. Reckoned as righteous. And the adult topic is for our sake. And we're still in the spring quarter, which is examining our faith. And then we're in unit three, standing in the faith. These are four lessons from the book of Romans, standing in the faith. Now, today's print passage comes from Romans, the fourth chapter, the 13th through the 25th verse. And this lesson is from May the 25th, 2024. Now again, we are continuing our faith walk from the book of Romans, which is a theological masterpiece. The Apostle Paul penned this letter at the church, uh, to the Church of Rome while he was visiting the church that he had established in Corinth. Corinth had become a bustling place where the scripture was just overwhelmingly going forth. Christianity was spreading like wildfire. But Paul was anticipating a future visit to Rome. Now he sent the letter by a female deacon named Phoebe who read the letter and also explained the letter and its contents to the believers. The church there at Rome was established by Jews who had traveled to Jerusalem from the Jewish feast of Pentecost and were among the 3,000 who accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now, none of the original apostles had visited Rome at the writing of the Roman letter. And it was important that the believers became grounded in Christian doctrine. So in today's lesson, we're examining the faith of Abraham, who was often being called the father of faith. Abraham heeded the voice of God when he called him to leave the Ur of Chaldees with his family and to begin a journey that Abraham did not know its final destination nor its challenges along the way. He was a 75-year-old man, didn't have any children, had a wife, he had cattle, he had servants, and um, he took his nephew Lot, which was might have been a bad decision, but never mind. But it was Abraham's faith in God's word that guided his path in life. Now today we will see that believing God and his plan of salvation is central to being declared righteous. So now let us begin our print passage. And it begins in Romans, the fourth chapter, in the 13th verse. And it reads, it was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be the heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. Now let's examine this 13th verse. It's saying that it's not by the law. Now remember, when Abraham lived, the law had not been given Everything that people knew about God had been passed down through generation to generation. Uh, 
Noah had to, because of the flood, he was he had to start new generations. And everybody else came out of that family. Terah, who was Abraham's father, uh, he, you know, all of them had descended from, from Noah and his families. And there was no word. It wasn't until Moses, until God gave a written word. So everything they knew about God was handed down. But he, he had a, an encounter with God while he was in the Ur of Chaldees, is where he lived, and some people there worshiped idols. But he received the promise. And the scripture says it was not through the law, because there wasn't a law, but he received the promise because of the word of God. And he said that Abraham and his offspring. At that time, he didn't have any offsprings. His name was Abram. His name was changed to Abraham, which means father of many nations. So while this man who had not born any children because his wife, Sarah, was, was barren, God told him, you're going to be the father of many nations. And yet he had no children. But he believed God. And every time somebody mentioned his name, that's why names are important. And Abraham means father of many nations. Names are important because every time his name was mentioned, Abraham, every time they said that word, they're saying father of many nations, father of many nations, father of many nations, father of many nations. And in the scripture, 13th verse, it said, and his offspring. Now notice it didn't say offsprings. It says his offspring, singular, which leads us to whom? Jesus Christ. The offspring from which many offsprings of Christ are birthed. And so, so it says, and his offspring received the promise that he would be the heir of the world. Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He would be the heir. He would be the rightful king of the whole world. But it says, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. And how did that happen? Because one man named Abram believed God. And he trusted him when he did not know what to expect. He did not know where he's going. He didn't know what the outcome was going to be. But he knew if God said it and he promised he'd be with him, that he was going to believe him and trust him. And by that faith, by that man who had faith, who sometimes sort of wavered, but in the final analysis, he kept the faith. And God accounted that for righteousness, being in right standing with God the Father. The 14th verse. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. You see, when, when you have a law, then breaking that law causes transgression. But if there is no law, then there's no transgression. If there isn't a law that in the, the speed limit is 70 miles per hour, if there's no law, if there's no speed limit at all, then you can go 100 miles an hour if your car, whatever because there's no law. And so it so this this verse tells us because it says for if those who depend on the law are heirs faith means nothing. If we're depending upon okay the law says this the law says that but we have trouble keeping the law. Flesh does not want to keep the law of God. It is only by faith. And see, Abraham, we have an advantage over Abraham because the Holy Spirit lives in us. 
The Holy Spirit dwells in us. The Holy Spirit is able to control us. Abraham was in the period of time when man was at a fallen state. There was no hope of salvation until a man decided to trust God. And God developed a relationship with mankind again. A relationship that would lead to a savior who would save the whole world. Anyone who believed on him and would become the king of kings and lord of lords. You see how the obedience of one person can make a difference? How it can affect the lives of others? And even today we have to remember what we do is not just affect it does not just affect us but it affects our family it affects those around us not only things we do but things we don't do in obedience to God lives can be changed if sometimes if you just share that Jesus Christ is Lord I'll never forget the time as I did prison ministry and a young lady accepted Christ as her savior during a Bible study in jail. And two months later, I saw her picture pasted across the newspaper. She had died in a terrible car wreck. What if I'd not been there for her? What if I not led her to Christ? So you see, it's important. What we do, it's not just for us. It's for those around us. And what Abraham did set the motion for God's plan of salvation because God knew Abraham's heart. He knew that he could trust him to eventually carry out his plan. Now, so it says, for if those who depend on the law are heirs faith means nothing and the promise is worthless so we can't if we are call ourselves heirs of Christ we call ourselves heirs of the promise of Abraham and we're depending upon just works like we talked about last week we're not justified by works we work to we work because we are saved we don't work to become saved works are an outgrowth of our salvation and so it's important that we remember that so because the law brings wrath and where there's no law there's no transgression if there was no law <laughs> then there would be no sin but God sent a law specifically for his people Israel to a guide for them to live by but the problem is they couldn't keep the law it wasn't possible to keep the law because the flesh always got in the way and so they had to make sacrifices of bulls and rams and and birds and things of that nature to cover their sins. But Jesus was the final sacrifice. And all because of Abraham's faith. Through generation, 42 generations, from Abraham to Mary, Jesus came to be our final sacrifice. Now let's go on to Romans 4th chapter, 16th verse. So it says, Therefore, and therefore refers to the fact that because of the law spells out sin, it causes us to be guilty. Is therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. 
He is our Father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. All of the promises, the many promises that God gave to Abraham, he promised him a land. He promised him seed. He promised him that he would be the father of many nations. And he promised that there would be an offspring that would change the world, that would rule the whole world. And that offspring is going to be the one, become the one who is going to allow each and every one of us to be saved from a burning hell. Because all men had a death penalty on his head. All mankind. But Jesus paid that death penalty for all of us. And it was by faith, only by faith in God and his word shall we see salvation. So, it says, therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed by unmerited favors because none of us deserve to be declared righteous. None of us deserve to be called justified. That means just as if we'd not sinned. But because of God's unmerited favor, his grace, and our faith in Jesus Christ, it says we are guaranteed to be offspring. It's a guarantee to all Abraham's offspring. Now remember, that's singular again. So what is it telling us? It's telling us that everybody who has made Jesus Christ the Lord of their lives becomes Abraham's offsprings. In other words, the promises given to Abraham are given to us. And there are many promises that God gave to Abraham. And not only that, the promise of eternal life, the promise of righteousness, the promise of a relationship with God, all of that. The promise of prosperity, of God meeting the needs of being a parent to us. All of that is guaranteed by the promises that come by faith. Not by the law. Not by just keeping the law. But by leaving what God said is true and trusting in and relying upon it. And today as Christians, following the leading of God's Holy Spirit who knows everything about everything and will never lead us wrong. If we follow his Holy Spirit, we will not go wrong. And so he's talking about guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. That means guaranteed to everyone who has put their trust in the offspring of promise that is Jesus Christ. And so all of us spring from them. Jesus was the firstborn from the dead. And all of us come after him. And it says not only to those who are of the law, that means not only to those of the, who, are, who are Jews who are under the law, but also to do, those who have faith, the faith of Abraham, the same faith that Abraham had. Be, he believed God. Even though it sounded impossible, even though he didn't understand it, he believed God. And that's the kind of faith, regardless of whether you're Jew or Gentile, you have to have in order to earn the title, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, in order to be saved, in order to stand proud and knowing that I am a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Abraham's offering, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who have the faith of Abraham. He is a father 
of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. That was his promise to Abraham. And it was not only physical nations of which he is a father of many physical nations. Not only of uh, the, those who are from Israel, but those, the Arabs, they, because of a, Abraham tried to help God, he and Sarah had a moment of weakness, and of course, from that uh, spurned the Arab nations. And he, after Sarah's death, he married a Keturah, who was um, of African descent. So, physically, he is the Abra Abraham is the father of many physical nations, but we're not talking about physical nations here. We're talking about spiritual nations. We're talking about through Christ Jesus. We have been engrafted in Abraham. It says, he is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. The same God that raises the dead, the same God who causes things that do not even exist to come into being, that God, the true and living God, he is our father in the sight of God, or he is, we are descendants of Abraham. Now, if we look back in Galatians, the third chapter, six through the ninth verse, another letter that Paul went, wrote uh, to the church at Galatia, he also intimates the same thing, telling us that we are seeds of Abraham because of our relationship with Christ Jesus. If we look at Galatians, the third chapter, six or ninth verse, it reads, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So that means all of us who've made Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives, we become engrafted, we become adopted as children of Abraham. And so all of his promises and all that God had promised to be as a, an inheritance from Abraham becomes our possessions. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, that's talking about the Gentiles, talking about those of us who are, who are not Jewish, that he was going to justify us too. It wasn't just going to be Israel. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham. God preached the gospel into Abraham because he told him there's going to be a descendant that's going to be responsible for the salvation of the entire world. Abraham was the first person the gospel was preached to. That his descendant was going to be the savior of the world. Let's read the eighth verse again. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. All nations will be blessed through his seed, Jesus Christ the Lord. Ninth verse, So then which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So all the blessings that are promised to Abraham and his seed fall upon all of us who've made Jesus the Lord of our lives. And that's what we need to remember today. It's by faith alone, by faith in Christ Jesus, that stubborn, clinging faith that we trust God no matter how the situation looks that Abraham had, that same kind of faith gives us the promises of God and all the rights and privileges as, this, as the children of God and as a descendant of Abraham. So, we look now to Romans, the fourth chapter, the 18th through 22nd verse, and 18th verse reads, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring 
offspring be? Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened by his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. All right, let's go back in history. When Abraham, remember, he left the Ur of Chaldees when he was about 75 years old. God appeared to him when he was about 99 years old and Sarah was about 90. Way past the childbearing age for both of them. And God said, you're going to have a baby. You're going to have a boy. It's going to be a boy of promise. And many nations are going to come out of your seed. Now, he had already promised many years ago that he was going to be the father of many nations. But, you know, time just kept passing by and nothing happened until... So Abraham didn't understand. He's he, he, beyond hope. He said, "This our body's just not fit for that right now. But nothing's impossible with God. You see, when God does something big in your life, I mean really big in your life, it's normally something that seems impossible. But if God said it, even though it seems impossible, he will do what he says he will do. Okay, so then he believed God. Now, along the way, as time went by, because it didn't happen the next day, it took several years for this promise to come to pass. They got a little impatient. And Sarah had this dumb idea, his wife, that it doesn't, you know, I'm getting old. <laughs> she was almost 100 years old then. And she said, uh, now, uh, why don't you just take my slave girl and you lay with her and then you have a child by her and then we'll, we'll maybe that's the way God wanted it. And, you know, Abraham knew better. Abraham knew that was not God's plan. Abraham knew that the child was come through Sarah. But he had an opportunity to be with this young slave girl of his wife's. And he did not say a mumbling word. He just went into her, and they conceived Ishmael. And that's why we have war between the Arabs and the Israelis today. But God forgave him of that. <laughs> and Abraham picked himself up and kept his faith in God. And he and Sarah had a child. And they named him Isaac. And along that line, he was going to be the seed that God was going to bring forth the Savior of the world. The scripture says Abraham didn't waver. And we know he did waver. Now why did he say he didn't waver? Because when a person repents. It's as if it never happens. We talked about justification last week. Justification is just it is, is now. So that he wasn't charged for his indiscretion. Yes, it affected things down the line. It, it causes issues along the line. Even today, the indiscretion that he and Sarah made back then. His mistakes that he made, and that wasn't the only mistake he made along the line. He lied about his wife and things of that nature. But, but in the final analysis, Abraham believed God and the promises that God had given him. And every promise God had given him came to pass because in the final analysis, even though he had his ups and he had his downs, Abraham kept his faith. 
And sometimes in life, we may have our ups and downs and our faith may grow weak, but don't, and sometimes we might slip along the way, but don't give up. Hold on, a, keep a strong grip on that faith and do what God says you can do and you will accomplish what God has set out for you to accomplish. And you will not fail when you fight the good fight of faith because the fight is fixed and you'll never lose. Fourth chapter, 23rd to 25th verse. The words it was credited to him were written not from alone, for him alone. So you see this example of Abraham was not for him alone but his faith was credited for righteousness it's for us too our faith in God credits us for righteousness for when we have faith in God and his son Jesus Christ he doesn't see the sin he doesn't see our misgivings and our mistakes he looks upon us as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus as a pure and perfect lamb. The words that was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. And Jesus, you know, Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. It says the Spirit of God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So not only we, we believe the Father, we believe the Son, but we believe the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, the power of God moving through us, giving us the power to have faith in God, giving us the strength and the tenacity to hold on beyond any thing that ever comes upon us, any mountain that's put before us, any gate that's set before us, we're able to climb over a storm through. 25th verse, he was delivered over to death, talking of Jesus Christ, for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And by faith in Jesus Christ alone, as we learned last week, we're counted for righteousness and we are justified, just as if we've never sinned. You know, Abraham, we talked about Abraham today, who came into this world as Abram, but his name was changed to Abraham, to mean father of many nations, even when he did not have a child. And he kept the faith. Through ups and downs, he kept the faith. And our lesson for us today is to keep the faith. You see, the world at that time, there was so much corruption going on. There was idol worship. People were just not paying attention that there was a God. Again, there was no written word. Anything that people knew of God was handed down through generations, through generation by mouth. And God needed a man. Because you see, because a man sinned, a man had to pay the penalty for the sin. And he had to find a man with enough faith who could bridge that gap. And you see, Abraham himself was, had sin in his life and he himself couldn't bridge the gap but he could bring forth the gap bridger Jesus Christ God does many things in relationship and as a result of what mankind does they're sowing and reaping and remember back in if we look at Hebrews 11 chapter 7 to the 19th verse it speaks of the time that God told Abram to sacrifice his only child, the child of promise, the one who was going to be the progenitor of many nations. 
And we look at Hebrews 11, chapter 17 to 19 verses. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So you see, Ab you remember Abraham, God told him offer his only son? Well, this scripture says that Abraham knew, okay, he promised that he knew that he believed God that he was going to be, the son was going to be progenitor of many nations. So if he offers him up as a sacrifice, God's got to raise him up. Because God has to keep his promise. God does not lie. That's how much faith Abraham had. This is what the scripture says. And remember, if you go back in the Old Testament, you'll find out that Abraham, when he went, he took his servants, he had the, had the wood for the fire, and he, he, they was going up to, he saw in afar off on Mount Moriah, to, he offered the sacrifice. And he told his servants, you stay here. Me and the boy are going to the mountains to worship. And the boy and I are coming back. So he well expected that somehow, some way, God was going to raise that boy up because he already promised that he was going to be the progenitor of many nations. And he went there. And remember, he wasn't a, a Isaac wasn't a little baby. He was, he was old enough. If he wanted to, he could have over come his father and he said forget this I'm not laying down here to be sacrificed but he laid him on the altar and I know Isaac didn't understand what was going on here and he was about to take his life when an angel said stay your hand look there's a ram in the bush that's your sacrifice you see it was God didn't want him to kill Isaac but he wanted to know if Abraham was willing to sacrifice his only son. You see, because Abraham, a man in flesh, was willing to sacrifice his only son, God was willing to sacrifice his only son for man. You see? Man had to show that he was willing to sacrifice his only son for God, so that God would sacrifice his only son for man. And that led to a lineage of faith, the faith of Abraham, to know that if he had to sacrifice his son, God had to raise him up because God keeps his promises. Today's lesson is telling us, it says, reckoned for righteousness. Our faith reckons or calls us to righteousness. We are, it is, in, as the scripture tells us, we, it's imputed upon us, which is a financial or a or a uh, term that is used in finance where we were guilty of sin and we couldn't pay the sin debt but Jesus came along and he paid that sin debt for us that we could not pay so if our account was put paid in full and by faith in Jesus Christ and believing that he paid our sin debt, that we might be free and be in right standing with God and count it as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, as saints and not sinners. So even though we make, maybe make a mistake, we repent and God cleanses us from all unrighteousness as if it never, ever happened. That's our lesson today. Do you have the faith of Abraham to believe that regardless of what you have to face, God will take care of it? 
God will give you the power and the strength and the determination to move mountains in your life. If you don't have that faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it's important not only that we know God's word, but that we believe God's word. And it is counted for us for righteousness. Covered in the blood, justified as if we've never sinned. So if you want to make Jesus the Lord of life, believe that Jesus died, that he arose from the grave, and that he's alive forevermore. Repent of all sin and ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior. Put your trust in him. Get out of the driver's seat. Put him in the driver's seat and you get in the passenger seat and go along for the ride. Ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit, just like on the day of Pentecost. Let those rivers of living water flow from your lips that you might be controlled by his Spirit and become the person that God created you to be. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers, grandmothers, stepmothers, godmothers, model mothers. Happy Mother's Day, and God bless you. See you next week.